Okay, welcome all. My name is Cameron O'Connell. I'm with the Department of Human Physiology, and today I'll be presenting on the effects of hydration status on renal hemodynamics. So as a bit of background, hypohydration is a state of low body water caused by fluid losses like sweating during heat stress or inadequate fluid consumption. So passive heat stress is known to reduce renal blood flow and increase renal vascular resistance in order to maintain blood pressure as blood is distributed to the skin to offload heat. We know that we can use a sympathetic stimulus during environmental stressors such as heat stress to probe the kidney's ability to control this renal blood flow. So our labs previously reported that hypohydration during heat stress attenuates increases in renal vascular resistance during this stimulus, meaning that there's a reduced ability to redistribute blood away from the kidneys. However, it remains unknown whether these changes occur during hypohydration independent of heat stress, so caused instead from inadequate fluid consumption. Therefore, the purpose of this study is to test the hypothesis that a mild prolonged hypohydration attenuates both reductions in blood velocity and increases in vascular resistance at the renal artery during this sympathetic stimulus. So to test this hypothesis, subjects participated in two experimental trials in a randomized crossover design. In one trial, they were normally hydrated, which are U hydration here. In the other trial here, the hypohydration, we elicited with 24 hours of fluid deprivation and no consumption of high water content foods like fruits, vegetables, or even soups. These are preliminary data, so today I'm presenting on eight healthy adults, five of which are females and three males. Um, subjects came in during the experimental protocol and we confirmed their hydration status with a nude body mass and urine sample. And then they conducted a 20 minute supine rest where we got baseline renal measurements. They then conducted the exercise presser reflex, which is our chosen sympathetic stimulus which consists of two minutes of static hand grip at 30% of their maximum, followed by two minutes of arterial occlusion on the same arm. Um, during hand grip, this model activates both the mechano and metaboreflex, which are both feedback mechanisms that increase sympathetic outflow. So arterial um, occlusion involves inflating an arm cuff to 250 millimeters of mercury to isolate the metaboreflex, by trapping metabolites in the arm. And this allows us to see the compensatory increases in blood pressure during this reflex. This model has two advantages. First, it allows us to compare the two phases of sympathetic activation. And second, it controls sympathetic outflow for percent effort for maximum, which the previous studies failed to do with their chosen sympathetic stimulus. Um, we know that both the mechano and the metabo reflex increase blood pressure, which is one of our main outcomes here in mean arterial pressure. We also examined renal artery blood velocity using Doppler ultrasound at the right renal artery. These were taken every minute during the test. We then calculated renal artery vascular resistance as mean arterial pressure divided by renal artery blood velocity. So before discussing the results, I'd just like to orient you to the figures. I presented mean changes from baseline in the bar graphs with the euhydrated group on the left in gray and the hypohydrated group on the right in blue. And then I've also shown individual values as symbols attached with lines. The hydration status column on the left is just proving that our protocol was effective. You can see in the hypohydrated group in blue that there was a over a 2% loss in nude body mass and a marked increase in urine specific gravity, which is just a spot test that compares the density of urine to water. Uh, so both of these findings are beyond accepted ranges of euhydration and they occurred in every single subject, um, which just confirms that the fluid deprivation protocol was effective at inducing this mild hypohydration. And then now looking towards the end of hand grip column, we observe the expected results of the exercise pressure reflex, which is an increase in mean arterial pressure. These occurred in both groups with no differences between. We also observed a decreased renal artery blood velocity in the euhydrated group. Although there is a trend towards an attenuated response in the hypohydrated group, you can see right near baseline here. And we also saw increases in renal artery vascular resistance. 
there were no differences between the groups here. Now focusing at the end of occlusion, where the metabo reflex is isolated, we saw no differences between any of the groups in any of the outcomes, and in general, a decreased response compared to the end of hand grip. So just to conclude, these preliminary data suggest that a mild prolonged hypohydration may attenuate the renal hemodynamic response specifically to the static hand grip phase of the exercise presser reflex. I would like to note these data are part of a larger ongoing study, so we think that a greater number of subjects will elucidate these trends and potentially reveal sex differences. And part of the larger goal is to understand how well the kidneys adapt to various stressors because this can inform how much strain is placed on homeostatic mechanisms like regulating blood pressure or fluid, for example. Um, in sum, I'd like to thank all the lab members for all their hard work on this, and I'm excited to expand on it in the future. Thank you all for listening.